This is the brand new Puma Future 7 Ultimate, which kind of continues along the same path that Puma followed on the previous Future, but still also offers quite a few significant changes. So in today's video, as always, I'll tell you what it does well and also not so well to hopefully help you decide if you should buy a pair of these or not. Because as always, I'm Jay Mike, and this is my review of the Puma Future 7 Ultimate. So the previous Future was quite popular, and that's probably one of the reasons why Puma have kept the same DNA on the upper. But while it still boasts a soft dual mesh forefoot and midfoot, there are still quite a few significant changes on the upper. See, instead of using these wavy strips of power tape on the sides, Puma have now moved two layers of power tape up on the top of the boot in this Y wishbone-like shape in order to give you the stability and the lockdown you need. Basically, push your foot down on the sole plate. And then on the midfoot here, they've also added, at least they say, some stability by providing their silicone micro texturing called power print. Now, from a purely comfort point of view, removing that power tape and especially that stiffer inner liner on the inside has been a really, really good decision because it just means that, especially on the forefoot here, it is, at least when it's not minus 10 degrees outside as it is right now, but it is as soft as on any future I can remember and just immediately takes to the shape of your foot. It's almost as soft that we're entering into like slipper-like territory here, especially because you have a cheeky little foam liner on the inside that just feels wonderfully plush. It's relatively snug around your foot because of that rather low pointy toe box, but it's also wide enough to feel, it's not cozy, but it's just instantly pleasant when you put it on. But to be fair to the last Future, it was also pretty comfortable. So for me, the big change on the Future 7 here is the power tape, because instead of having the stiffness and stability on the side, now you actually feel a very obvious structure on top of the foot, where it, I'd almost compare it a little bit to like a seat belt, because it's basically there to restrict the amount of stretching that the knit can do. Meaning that usually if you have a knit without some power tape on, it can stretch a lot. And that means that it doesn't hold your foot as strongly in place when you start to move it inside of the boot, you change direction, all that stuff. That's what power tape is there to prevent. And you definitely feel that there is some sort of hold on top of your foot. And I would say that to that extent, it kind of does a pretty good job because you feel that it's there, but without it being overly tight and uncomfortable, again, a little bit like a seatbelt where it works, when your foot starts to move a little bit, it doesn't move as much as it would without the power tape. I would also say, however, yes, it does something, but for me, it's not significant enough to like dramatically improve the lockdown on the boot all by itself, at least. And of course, also having a more structured feeling on top of a stretchy knit piece means that it doesn't have the same ability to stretch and adapt to your shape of the foot as it would without the power tape. Now for me, I have a little bit of a high volume foot right here and I definitely felt that there was a slightly tighter, more restrictive fit because of the power tape. So if you do have a high volume instep, uh, you might want to try the boots on to kind of judge whether they're too tight for you or not. But apart from the power tape, if you've tried the previous Future Ultimate, it will feel rather familiar, I think. Because sure, the color, height, and construction has changed a little bit, but that and the heel will feel largely similar, I would say. Now, the same thing goes for the size, where for me at least, it runs ever so slightly long, maybe not even a quarter of a size, but there's just a little bit of space in the forefoot not for me enough to go down half a size, that would be too snug, but um, true to size should be the way to go. And also, it is on the wider side, so should accommodate for most foot shapes. True to size, and you'll be a happy camper. And then there is the touch, which is another key focus area for the future. And there is a lot of micro texturing going on from the power print, which has a very gritty feel to it. And uh, while the power print won't exactly make you a better dribbler, I mean, otherwise I wouldn't be wearing anything else but this for the rest of my life, but it does add a slightly amplified feeling of this almost like gritty little rough sensation on the ball when you're on it. To the point where there's like constant little stimulation off your foot whenever you touch the ball. And if you like grip on your boots, but without it being too much Phantom GX Predator-like in your face, it's a very nice balance. And also that rather low pointy toe box means that the future feels 
on the more nimble side of things when you strike the ball, it's relatively easy in getting effortlessly under the ball. And then you have that foam package on the inside that means that while the upper is on the thinner, closer side to the ball, you also get that hint of a soft-ish elegance. So um, nicely balanced on the ball, I would say. The outsole, well, it, um, <laughs> it hasn't changed at all, to be honest, using the same dynamic motion system from the last future. And uh, honestly, that's a pretty fair decision. I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So you still have a rock solid midfoot and I would say a rather responsive feel to the entire outsole. Now, the studs here are on the longer side, which means that I would be a bit hesitant on using them on harder pitches or here, like on AG, where you want to go with the MG outsole just to be on the safe side, right? But on a proper FG pitch, you really get a ton of traction and bite and it feels very responsive and just Honestly, I like it a lot because it just helps you really push off and transfer a lot of energy to the ground. But just keep the length and the shape of the studs in mind if you have some troubles with your joints and your knees and you play on harder pinches. Just, just don't do it. And while that might not be a deal breaker, it's still a good enough segue to four annoying things that you also need to know about. The first thing is that Puma say that you can actually go full laceless if you want because of the power tape. But while I recognize that, yes, it does something in terms of aiding that feeling of lockdown, as I mentioned before, for me, it just doesn't do enough in terms of properly locking your foot in on its own for me to feel comfortable. So I probably wouldn't do it. And that ties into the heel, which for me feels just a little bit too shallow to properly fix my foot in place. Sure, there's a bit of lock, but for me it's just too low and it feels a little bit too loose and it's not as bad as on the Ultra, which is more shallow, for me at least. But Puma, if you really want the power tape to feel like it's aiding lockdown, having a slightly deeper heel that also fixates the foot in place and locks it in would have helped a lot. But the laces are also annoying. Well, to be fair, the lace holes are annoying because now there are fewer than on the previous future. And that means that also you don't have as many options to really adjust the fit, but it also just leaves a lot of the mid for stability to be done by the power tape. And again, for me, it just wasn't enough. So I would have liked a few more lace holes, Puma. Would it have hurt you to just punch some holes in the pool? And finally, there is the price. See, the future now costs 230 euros, which is a 10 euro price hike from the previous future. And that's by no means unfair when you look at all the other top models out there, but I'm just not a big fan of price hikes when it's more of a refinement than actual big uber mega innovation. So just a... Ah. But if you are into a super comfortable and very slipper-like feel with a little bit of structure and solidity on top, the Future 7 will do a very good job. Now, I probably won't have the Future 7 as my personal go-to boot. It's not that I don't like it, but the fit and the shape of it just doesn't match 100% with my foot. But if you had and enjoyed the previous Future Ultimate, I think you're gonna like the Future 7 Ultimate a lot as well. It's arguably even more comfortable, and while it does sacrifice maybe a bit on lockdown, I really like the Puma took power tape in a new direction that does something. And again, whether that's a good or a bad thing is for you to decide, but I think definitely that it's a right direction for it. But guys, what do you think about the Future 7? Let me know in the comment section right down below. Remember that you can buy the new boots right over there in the link to your sport. And of course, also don't forget to subscribe to the channel with the notifications on. And with those words, I'll be signing off. Cheerio.